everyone. So in this video, I thought I would tackle email inbox management. Um, so I don't know how you find the number of emails you receive each day, each week. When I worked in industry, I got a lot of daily emails. Working in academia, I get a lot of emails. Um, and I think, you know, sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming. So I thought in this video, I'd just share some of the tactics that I use to try to keep my email inbox in some sort of control. I know as a student, when you send an email to an academic member of staff, you really, really want a, a quick reply to respond to your problems. So I thought as well, I would talk a little bit about that and kind of the time scales and how I try to respond to certain emails within certain time span. So I had a look, ignore the scrappy bit of paper, but I had a look at my current university email inbox. So I have a filing system. Um, I know some of my colleagues tend to keep all their emails just in their central inbox. Um, I tend to work best if I have some kind of filing folder structure going on. So within my main university email account, I've got 23 main subject folders within my inbox. And then I counted how many subfolders I have within each of those 23 folders. And I have... On the plus side, then in my active inbox, so in the inbox that I'm sort of dealing with day to day, I try to keep it to under 50 emails. So I have a bit of a system where every Wednesday and Friday, I try to make sure that I filed the emails that I've dealt with into one of these subfolders. So then let me talk you through my, my main topic folders. So within these 23 main folders, I've got things like admissions, my year one module that I teach, PhD students, research group colleagues, science communication, physics colleagues, university colleagues, external colleagues, industry-based colleagues, conferences, PhD examiner, students' personal tutor, students' projects, students' requests, funding bids, publications, MSc module, personal HR and travel, and, and a fairly new folder, COVID and teaching. Okay, so they are my main topic folders in my inbox. And then, as I said, within these main 23 folders, I've got many subfolders. So under the physics colleagues, I then have a folder for each individual physics colleague that I work with. Um, the same goes with my external colleagues, my industry-based colleagues. With my student personal tutors, I actually have them by year. So students that started in 2017, 18, 19, 20, and then within that year, I have them listed out by name. I do the same with my student projects. Individual funding bids also get their own subfolder within my inbox folder structure system. You can see how it basically works. Essentially, I have some main folders in the main areas that I work in and then some subfolders that I use. And as I said, every Wednesday and Friday, I try to file my emails into those folders. Now, managing your email inbox, I think, is something that's very personal and we, we all will tackle it in a different way. Uh, for me, I need to have my inbox not having too many emails that I need to action at any one point in time. So by having some kind of filing structure, I can feel like I've dealt with emails and moved them out of the way, leaving only the ones I then need to focus on in my email main inbox. Um, now, in terms of replying to emails, so I did a little bit of research on the internet and I think, you know, some academic lecturers, some professors say that you should aim to answer within 24 hours to students. Some say that you shouldn't answer that quickly and, you know, you can have a few days to answer. Um, and it's about setting the expectation management of how quickly you as a tutor are going to be able to answer your student inquiries. For me, um, I try to answer student inquiries in a timely manner. So if I've got a student email that's come from one of my personal tutees or has come from one of my PhD students, one of the project students that I'm looking after or a student working on one of my modules, I really will try to answer that email fairly promptly. Um, you know, ideally, yes, it would be within 24, 48 hours. Um, I try to do that. Sometimes it might be slightly longer, 72 hours, um, but I do try to turn around those emails fairly quickly. If I get a student email that's coming from maybe a wider inquiry on part of the campus, it, you know, again, it, I'll try to do it quickly, but it, it might take me a couple of days to get back to that particular student. 
if I'm getting student inquiries actually from outside the university, um, again, if they're admissions related, I will try to turn those around fairly promptly. Um, but sometimes you're going to get speculative emails from students inquiring about research opportunities within your department. Um, and they're lovely to receive, but I tend to have to answer those in kind of batches. So rather than doing them every couple of days, I'll, I'll collect those emails together and maybe, you know, once a week address all the emails that have come in from, from outside my immediate student cohort. It's, it's quite tricky. I know as a student, when you send an email in, you want a, you know, want a quick reply, you know, you want a, a fast response. Um, and I think as academics, we do endeavour to do that. I'm just very conscious that sometimes, you know, you can't always do it so quickly as you'd like because you've got other pressures. You know, you have your research pressures and your um, academic role within the department pressures. And, you know, there's things you might be doing for particular conferences or experiments or travel. And all of these will be sending you emails that need to have fairly prompt replies. In terms of checking my email inbox over the weekend, I do. Um, so again, I know I've got academic colleagues that are very strict about this. You know, they're very good with work-life balance and they, they don't check their emails across the weekend. Um, I do check mine. Um, I don't have a schedule for checking them over the weekend. You know, I'll just probably have a look once or twice. I tend not to reply to student emails across the weekend. So I tend to do my student email replying Monday to Friday. I do have a couple of exceptions. So obviously, if it's a critical staff or student matter that's come in over the weekend, I will endeavour to deal with it. Um, I will sometimes see emails that have come in from colleagues across the weekend. And again, typically, I won't answer them until we get to the working week unless it's something that does need immediate action. I think the way to view it is, at least for me, I don't guarantee that I will be checking my inbox over the weekend. So, you know, Monday to Friday, absolutely, I'm checking my email inbox within working hours. Sometimes, well, quite often outside working hours as well. You know, quite often I'll have a look at the emails later in the evening just to see if anything's come in. But at the weekend, I do try to have a proper break. Um, and if I'm looking at the email box, it's just really to monitor it rather than actively responding or engaging with those emails. And when I go on holiday, um, which I don't feel like I've had a holiday in ages. I think that's probably true for many of us. But uh, when I do take some time out, I am really, really try to stick to not looking at my email inbox. So I'll set an out of office email message that pops up. Obviously, I'll, I'll tell my students when I'm not going to be checking and accessing my emails. And I do try to properly switch off because otherwise I think we are beholden to our emails. You know, so they just come in all the time. We just get email traffic all the time and I think it is important to be able to disconnect from them at least occasionally. So yeah that's how I manage my email inbox. I, I had no idea that I had so many subfolders going on in my management system but anyway it works it works for me it means that I have a kind of a, a minimal set of emails each day that I need to action and it gives me some sort of structure for when I want to find old emails I can I can dig them out hopefully fairly easily um, I'd love to know how you do it how do you manage to maintain control over what seems to be email inboxes that get larger and larger every year um, Next week, the video is going to be all about how I prepare for a class when I haven't actually taught that area or that material before. Um, it was a request that came from the comments oh, a little while ago now, so sorry it's taken me a while to action it, but that is the video for next week. Um, if you're new to the channel, hi, welcome. If you're coming back, it's lovely to have you back here. Uh, so I'm Dr. CST or Caroline, and I put a video up every Monday all about university and academic matters. I'm a lecturer in physics here in the UK. So if university and academic life is your thing, please do join the channel, hit like, leave me a comment. Really like reading your comments, but have a good week. Stay safe and look after yourself. Good luck managing and policing your email inbox and I'll see you next week. Bye.